Well, with the increase in cropping uh, and minimum tillage, there's often a thought that there's more of the micronutrients taken out of the system, uh, loss. Uh, so therefore, the work that we did back in the uh, 80s and uh, into the 90s on the residual value doesn't hold anymore. However, if you look at the removal of the micronutrients out of the system, they're very small compared to the amount that we are applying. So we're putting on uh, maybe 1,500 grams or 1.5 kilos of copper, and we're taking out about three grams of copper per tonne. So the removal is still very small to what we applied. Uh, the residual value story hasn't really changed uh, that dramatically uh, with minimum tillage and high nitrogen use. Potassium was originally uh, one of the macronutrients that was never applied to in the cropping situation. Uh, most of our soils had potassium down the profile, particularly at the clay layer. Uh, as we've cropped uh, continuously and uh, through the past, uh, we have removed potassium out of our system uh, till uh, probably five, six years ago, maybe slightly longer. Uh, potash was seen in the cereals uh, quite extensively and particularly in the wave project that we, uh, we did do. So uh, potash has become a regular macronutrient application for cereal farmers in WA. Uh, so potash levels have declined and uh, farmers are now, now well aware of it uh, through soil testing. In uh, WA we've got uh, acidic sandy soils. Uh, often our magnesium levels are low. Uh, we do see very low magnesium levels uh, in plant uh, cereal uh, tissue. Um, to date, we've looked at it several times and uh, never been able to get a response to magnesium uh, fertiliser uh, in the cereals, uh, but it could be an emerging problem for the future as we remove magnesium and don't any, use any magnesium fertiliser. So it's a possibility that magnesium uh, could be one of those macronutrients for the future that we'll need to look at. Calcium's uh, another essential uh, plant nutrient. In the past, uh, there's been high application rates of uh, plain super, which is, contains calcium, uh, which has had, added it to our soils. Uh, as we move to the uh, the compound fertilisers, which are, don't have that calcium in it, um, there could be a problem for the future. Um, but at the moment, it looks as though most of the calcium that we do have in the soil uh, is readily available to the plant um, at this point in time. So maybe in the future, uh, calcium could become. We do see calcium deficiency in uh, canola uh, after uh, wet spring wet springs when the season, uh, the soils dry out and uh, there's rapid growth of canola. We see tipple topple, uh, but no economic responses to calcium sprays to date. Certainly in the uh, late 70s when I started in the department, uh, there was a lot of phosphorus work done. Uh, the price of phosphorus had uh, skyrocketed because the super bounty had finished. Um, now, uh, with the constant application of plain super through 30 or 40 years, uh, a lot of Western Australian soils are now have adequate levels of phosphorus. So in the past few years, um, we've found that it's often better for farmers to put their dollars, fertiliser dollars, into other nutrients, not whether it be nitrogen or, or potassium or lime applications. But uh, still need a soil test uh, for phosphorus, of course. I'm not advocating no soil testing. Most of our NP fertilisers uh, compound fertilisers, they put a little bit of sulphur back in, in them nowadays, so you know, people like Summit and uh, CSBP have got some sulphur in those compound fertilisers to replace what's being removed out of the system. Uh, but to date, uh, we've never seen any sulphur responses in the cereals in the work that we've done, although we do see sulphur responses and have seen sulphur responses in canola. Zinc is uh, another important micronutrient uh, for WA agriculture. There's about 11 million hectares of WA are, are zinc deficient. Uh, in the early days uh, we used uh, plain super 
uh, from the island rock phosphates which had high amounts of zinc in them. Uh, this zinc uh, was uh, tr uh, transferred or into the plain super uh, and obviously <coughs> the amount of uh, zinc in those uh, plain super applications were enough to meet the crop requirement uh, for a large section of the state. However, there is zinc deficient soils in WA uh, where a copper and zinc uh, basal fertiliser had to be applied uh, for economic uh, crop production. So zinc is uh, uh, certainly a uh, an important micronutrient uh, to, for WA agriculture. In recent years, um, most of the soils are, are zinc adequate. Uh, we've been able to, unable to find uh, zinc responsive sites uh, around the state in the current micronutrient uh, project that I've got. So zinc is one of those micros that uh, we seem to be well covered. A molybdenum fertiliser for the cereals is important in Western Australia as well. Molly is often associated with the legumes, uh, but in WA we see micronutrient uh, molly deficiency in uh, wheat. Uh, we found uh, that there's been large responses. Uh, also, the the degree of response or the responsiveness of wheat depends on the what's in the grain. So, uh, frequently, uh, if you have high molly in the seed. Uh, you see a small response to moly. Uh, particularly noticeable in the bigger seeds, such as lupins, uh, where you can actually overcome moly deficiency by the amount of molybdenum in, in the grain. One of the uh, long-term issues that uh, could be very important to farmers that have moved into um, min-till situations uh, would be the stratification of nutrients within their soil profile. Uh, this could could dramatically change how they need to soil test uh, and the depth that they need to soil test. So uh, this certainly could change uh, the requirements or fertiliser advice in the future. So that's a, an area that we need to be well aware of is the stratification of nutrients within the soil profile.